Welcome to this edition of Call Your Recap. I'm Troy Miller and this is a recap of the October 22nd Board of County Commissioners meeting. The board began the day with a proclamation celebrating October 25th as the 14th annual Red Walk in celebration of Red Ribbon activities. The Red Walk was developed as a part of the Red Ribbon activities established by the Substance Abuse Coalition of Collier County, as well as the Collier County Public School System in association with the National Drug Awareness Campaign. The Red Walk has been bringing caring adults and community organizations into the lives of children for 10 years and is the only drug awareness walking program in Southwest Florida. The proclamation was accepted by Amanda Cubbin from Laley Elementary and Craig Grusel, Red Ribbon Week Project Director. The board heard a recommendation to award to the invitation to bid in the amount of $1,669,994.80 to ADJ Excavating of Florida Incorporated to replace the water mains on 93rd and 94th Avenues North under project number 71010. Tom Schmelick, Public Utilities Planning and Project Management Director, explained why the project is needed. This is a very important project to this portion of the community, it's really the oldest area that we have for our water infrastructure. And could you define the community, please? Yes, for Naples Park, I'm sorry. Thank you. And uh, represents 20 streets in this area. Uh, you've already approved uh, the rehabilitation of water mains on two of those streets. And these are the next two. We'll be, be coming back in 15 for subsequent for 10 years to rehabilitate this whole area. But it's oldest pipe. Uh, we have a lot of breaks in this area. It's just time for it to be replaced, and uh, that's the program. The board unanimously approved the project. The outdated distribution system was installed in the late 1960s. The asbestos cement pipe has reached the end of its useful life. Due to the pipe's age and environment, there are an ever-increasing number of water main leaks and breaks, which directly affects the county's ability to supply uninterrupted service to its customers. This project will directly benefit approximately 640 residents. As the board does every year, it went about the business of approving the proposed list of Collier County 2014 state legislative priorities. At the top of the list this year is the Public Safety Center on Alligator Alley. Supporting the development of the Public Safety Center on Alligator Alley, which is a facility at mile marker 63, which is uh, comparable to the one that Broward County has on the eastern end of the alley, and that is to uh, support emergency response along the I-75 corridor and, of course, the supporting uh, uh, operational funding from Florida Department of Transportation. Other notable items on the list are a need for an inland oil drilling and fracking task force, funding for an economic incubator, and protecting research programs and preserving educational resource facilities at UFIFAS in Collier County. To view the complete list of Collier County's 2014 state legislative priorities, go to colliergov.net. Commissioners received a recommendation from staff to approve a prioritized list of land development code amendments for the 2014 amendment cycle. The prioritized list is comprised of LDC amendments that have been identified by county staff and stakeholders over the past year. The list encompasses a broad range of issues including board directed amendments, large revisions to existing sections, and general clarifications. Commissioner Tom Henning voiced his concerns for amendments that would affect the Immokalee area. There's two things that we can do to really help Immokalee in their LDR process. One thing that we can do is to make sure that staff puts in um, uh, to the hearing officer's domain is to include the Immokalee um, LDRs um, or deviations such as um, setbacks, um, you know, color schemes and, and things of that nature. The second thing, which uh, Nick Castle and Guida agrees, is also take the the interim uh, Amakli LDRs and whatever is in the uh, LDC and put it into the uh, Code of Laws. So that can be responded to instead of a cycle of uh, LDRs or LDC amendments, uh, it can be responded to in a matter of short, short time. And that's what I would like to see. 
The commissioners approved the list and directed staff to work with the board as they work through the items on the list. The list includes a wide range of amendments dealing with everything from the newly created hearing examiner to the Transfer Development Rights or TDR program. The commissioners heard recommendations from the county attorney on how they can modify public input into the BCC meetings. The recommendations covered three main areas. The first recommendation was to move public comment on general topics to a time certain location in the meeting. Second, whenever practical, large items would be staggered over different meetings. Lastly, when items draw a large number of speakers supporting an or opposing an item, that they be encouraged to adopt a single spokesperson to present their views. Commissioners weighed in on the recommendations. We should be be requiring that people talk to us about things that are within our purview of responsibility and things we should be expected to take action on. Um, and, and, and that's, that's I think, it should be uh, limited to that. I, I do believe that there is some utility in, in having large groups uh, managed under the specific conditions where uh, some group might come before this board intending to disrupt the normal business process or to uh, generally filibuster the board on, a, on, an, on an issue. Right. And so I believe that we do need a mechanism uh, within our policy to uh, be able to keep uh, the meeting run with some decorum and to also have it be uh, efficient in, in that case. The commissioners directed the county manager to do his best to stagger large items over multiple meetings and the public comment on non-agenda topics be given a time certain as the first new item heard after lunch. Items with large groups registering to speak will be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. Acting as the airport authority, the Board of County Commissioners heard two items regarding the rehabilitation and repair of the runway at the Marco Island Airport. First, a joint participation agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation to accept a grant offer in the amount of $178,750. Next, the board approved an invitation to bid in the amount of $5,686,642.28 with Owens Ames Kimball Company, and also approved a contract with Hole Montez not to exceed $562,655 for engineering oversight on the runway project. Notice to proceed will not be issued on the project until necessary permits have been received. Still acting as the airport authority, the commissioners took similar action for repairs and rehabilitation to runway 927, signing a joint participation agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation for a grant in the amount of $143,000. Next, a $7,232,241.04 contract was signed with Owens Ames Kimball Company for work on the runway. Hole Montez was awarded an engineering oversight contract for no more than $778,095. Once again, no work will begin until all of the necessary permits have been granted. That's all for this edition of Call Your Recap. Your recap of Collier County Board of County Commissioners meetings. Now, if you want to review all or part of any county commission meeting, visit CollierGov.net and click on the Video Archive section. Once in the Archive section, select the meeting you want to review. For BCC meetings, you can use the convenient drop-down menu to select and jump to any item you are interested in. For additional information on Collier County government, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash CollierGov. You can also check out videos about county government services at the CollierGov YouTube channel. I'm Troy Miller. Thanks for watching Collier Recap. We'll see you next time. You're watching Collier Television, bringing government home.